Hey, this is Dao Too Fast here. If you watched my first video on installing a remote start system in your vehicle, I did mention that I would do a video talking about the bypass modules. And I think it's important that I share with you the information I know about these things so that if you're interested in doing this install, that you don't get so confused because it can get very confusing. So with the bypass module, what it allows you to do is to remotely start the vehicle without having the key because most uh, cars these days do have a transponder chip built inside the key so that when you start the vehicle, the car recognizes that you have the right key for the car and allow you to start. So without the key in the car and you're trying to remotely start the vehicle, you need a device like this, a bypass module. So let's first talk about the different manufacturers that make bypass module. There are basically three companies on the market that make these things. One of them is called ADS, or Automotive Data Solutions, and the other one is DEI, Direct Electronics Incorporated. And DEI, uh, you might be familiar with uh, Viper Alarms, Python Alarms, Clifford Alarms, same company. The third company that makes uh, bypass module is Fortin. With every manufacturer of these bypass modules, they have their own proprietary communication protocol. So let's first talk about ADS bypass modules. So ADS uses a protocol that's called iDatalink. And with DEI, theirs is called E2D. ADS did come out and made a compatible protocol that's same as D2D, but instead of calling that, they call it DBI. So if you look on iDatalink's website, they'll talk about their own iData link uh, protocol and also the DBI protocol. Now Fortin also have their own proprietary protocol and their protocol is called Data Link. In front of me I have two bypass modules. The left one is the Flash Logic FL CAN and the right one is iData Link ALCA. In fact both of these are exactly the same bypass modules. What it is that the Flash Logic is rebranded from this model and is marketed under AudioVox so that this bypass module will have the right connector to connect the bypass module to any of the AudioVox alarm systems. So in the box the only difference between these two is the FL CAN you'll get a different cable with a brown end that will connect into the audio box alarms and this one ALCA is missing that cable. Let me open the ALCA so you can see what's inside and also if you look at the back it does tell you that this is compatible with DBI and of course by default um, when you get this module most likely it's flashed with the iData link firmware but again, you can flash it with a DBI firmware if you want to. So this is what you get inside the box. This is the bypass module. As you can see, it's very small. A couple of connectors, LED status, a push button to program this for data mode or wired mode. On the back, you have more connectors. And these are the cables that come with it. This one with the red connector is the data cable you would connect from the bypass module to the alarm system. And this red connector is compatible with all the DEI like a Viper or Python alarm systems. Just to show you what each of those wires are for, I've connected those wire harnesses onto the ALCA bypass module. And starting with this white bundle here, this is for your immobilizer data signal. This yellow one here is the door status and trunk status. This one here with the orange and pink wire you see here is for the can high, can low and the immobilizer data. This one at the bottom here, you're not going to use all the wires here, but for example there is brake status output on this. On the left side, these cables here 
are what's going to be connected to the remote start alarm system. Whereas all the cables on the right side, typically, not all of them, but many of these are going to be connected to the car, the vehicle. Now, with the data cable here, this is for data mode. So the way this works is that when it reads all the data signal from the vehicle, it will translate it in this box and it will send that data out on this cable to your remote start alarm system. Depending on what firmware you flash on the bypass module, if you decide to use a data mode, it can provide information such as the data immobilizer bypass, OEM arm, OEM disarm, door lock, door unlock, trunk hatch release, power lift gate, door status, trunk status, hood status, and tachometer. If you choose to use a bypass module in the wired mode, then those outputs will be coming out of this wire harness, but you also need to connect each wire one by one from the bypass module to the remote start. One thing to note is that if you're going to set this bypass module to data mode, meaning you'll connect it using that black cable, then on the wiring harness, most of those inputs will be disabled. You will not be able to use both the data and the wire harness simultaneously. Now depending on the firmware, some firmware do have the output wire still working, so that all depends on how that firmware was written for that application. Let me show you what the wiring diagram looks like from iDataLink. And here's an example. Again, depending on which firmware you're going to use on this module, like for example, this one I printed is for ADS-ALDL-NI4. So with that firmware, this is the wiring guide you need to follow to do your install. And it'll tell you everything you need to connect with a solid line, all the black solid line needs to be connected. It will also tell you what wires need to be connected for the immobilizer side, or in this case there's also a CAN high low wire that you need to connect. The dotted lines do not need to be connected if you're using data mode. These installation guide can be downloaded from the iDataLink website so you can review what connection it needs prior to even buying any of these hardware. One thing to note with this diagram is that the iDataLink wiring guide does not tell you on the remote starter what are some of the accessory wires or ignition wires you need to connect. I'll show you the wiring guide for a DEI Express Kit Bypass module and if you look over here the remote start section here I've highlighted these top areas here and let me zoom in and I'll show you what I mean. As you can see on the DEI Express Kit it does tell you the remote start also need to have the ground 12 volt accessory wire, accessory 2 wire, ignition wire and the start output or start wire connected from the vehicle to your remote start. These wiring guides usually are 10 to 20 pages and it will even tell you what color and what connector you need to tap into in the vehicle say for the immobilizer connector or the OBD connector to get the CAN low CAN high connection let's talk a little bit about the firmware to flash on these bypass modules and this is a very important thing you need to know about this these modules do need to be flashed to the specific year make and model of your vehicle. To flash the iDataLink bypass module you do need to register it for an account to access their website so you can download and flash these modules. So if, let's say you're gonna go on eBay and buy these bypass modules some seller will tell you I'm just selling you the bypass module but nothing's flash on this. You need to flash these yourself and then some seller do offer that service for a small fee and some sellers actually will offer free flashing prior to shipping so you need to pay attention to the fine prints in the eBay auction on top of that to flash any of these bypass modules doesn't matter if it's ADS, DEI or Fortin they all need a special 
cable to connect between this module to your PC to do the flashing. Let's take a minute to talk about which protocol you want to use to flash these bypass modules. In the beginning of the video I mentioned that the ALCA and the FL CAN can be flashed with either the DBI protocol or the iDatalink protocol. You need to first understand which protocol your remote start alarm system uses so that you can pick and choose which type of firmware you want to flash. If you want to go with DBI or you want to go with the iDatalink protocol. Depending on which brand of remote start alarm system you buy, sometimes that will determine what type of firmware you'll need to do the installation. So for example, the AudioVox alarm systems, uh, by default, they're all DBI. It requires DBI protocol and it needs that brown connector cable similar to this, but again, this red one is for DBI. You'll need the brown cable to connect to the AudioVox alarm system. The more recent AudioVox alarm systems do have an option for you to program so you can change it from DBI to ADS protocol. Now if you have a DI alarm system, mainly their protocol they use is going to be the D2D protocol which is same as DBI. And if you have a CompuStar, I've not really worked on a CompuStar, I believe it's compatible with all three uh, ADS, DBI and also the Fortin's uh, data link protocol. So here for example I have the FlashLogic FL CAN bypass module on the left and I have the AudioVox Prestige Alarm on the right. This black cable you see here is the data cable. So when you connect everything up in the vehicle this bypass module will send all the car's information for door lock, door trigger, uh, tack wire, all that information will be sent to the remote starter. And this is what they call a data wire for data mode. So the things you need to know is that between different manufacturers of remote start systems, they use different connectors for their data port. And if you don't have the right cable or the right connector, you'll never be able to connect these two together. I hope this information is helpful to you guys who might be interested in installing your own remote star system in your vehicle. Anyways, I hope uh, you got some good information from this and uh, don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button. Thank you.